COVID has been a really interesting time for the beauty industry. I think in many ways, there has been some categories that have actually peaked and grown, um, such as fragrance and skincare, hair care, and things that really help um, your natural beauty. Um, the color category has taken a hit because people are just going out less and even um, you know, on Zoom, people don't have to wear as much makeup. So it's been a very interesting journey, um, but it's been really great to see people really want to get in tune with their emotions and feel better through the power of fragrance. And that's been extremely exciting for me as a founder of KLE, our fragrance brand. Um, so scents have been exploding, which is very cool. And Mona, it's fascinating. You know, we're on CNBC, so we like to talk about the numbers. We know you've been expanding your uh, product lines recently. Huda Beauty has a huge uh, growth trajectory across the region. It's a real MENA success story. But help us understand the revenue split now between your wholesale retail business and your uh, e-com, your direct-to-consumer offering. And are we seeing a push, a move towards that direct-to-consumer offering in the future now? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we did have a very different split pre-pandemic. I think it was around 80-20, but we see that number just increasingly growing. Um, and we've really prioritized our D2C channels, um, which has been kind of great in a way because I think we should have done it a long time ago. But with the pandemic, we've been forced to really focus on growing that because our, our numbers with our retailers typically were about um, 80 percent bricks and mortar, 20 percent e-com. So seeing that change really um, drastically shift overnight has just made us realize how important it is to to focus on our own D2C because that's the only thing you can really rely on in a major pandemic or a, a disaster situation. How have you been dealing with the supply constraints that we've seen uh, amid the pandemic? Of course, everyone's at home, everyone wants to order online, but we're seeing delivery companies really struggling to be able uh, to meet up with the strong demand that's out there. It doesn't really, really seem to matter which part of the world that you're in. Uh, a lot of people complaining about the fact that they're having to wait so long for their packages. Yeah, it's been really tough. I mean, there were so many challenges all the way from just delivering customers their orders, but also from a logistics standpoint, creating our products. Like there were moments where factories shut down for months and we had to delay some of the projects over a year. Uh, my latest launch for Kelly was a year delayed and some of our projects we just had to cancel because they're no longer as relevant or other brands maybe launch the same product around the same, you know, um, at the time we were supposed to launch. So they're not new anymore. So it really did create a lot of uh, chaos from a supply, supply chain perspective, but you just have to take it one product at a time. And, um, you know, I think one thing with COVID is like all of us realized people's lives are more important than any product. And I know it's probably like funny to say this on a business channel, but we care more about the people who are helping to create our products than actually making sales because everybody's lives are impacted.